devalued, enraged, earth shattering, learning, un-American, discouraged, suffering, defeated, outraged, appalled, atrocious, complicated, disgusted, heartbroken, tyranny, disheartening, stunned, enraged, appalled, freedom, misogyny, confused, insignificance, authoritarianism, disgusted. A lot of voices, a lot of emotions, and a lot of questions. That's what this week is about. My only regret is that I can't hold space for everyone to share their personal stories in detail in one episode, or even one word. One word about how you felt with the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade on June 24th, 2022. But when I put the message out there that I wanted to hear from you, I was on the receiving end of a lot of those personal stories. You reached out to me. You opened up. Friends, family, clients, strangers, private messages, direct messages, social media comments, phone calls, texts, you name it, I heard it. And let me tell you something, each and every one of them hit me. One word? It's not that simple, is it? But there's a reason why I did that, and I'm about to share that with you in a moment. If you're just joining me for the first time, making a choice to tune into this podcast, let me first say this. Welcome, and thank you. I know you could be anywhere, and yet you choose to be here. Holistically speaking is empowering conversations of trauma to triumph through health, healing, and humor. That is this podcast. And for the past two years, since the date we launched our very first episode, which coincidentally was on June 24th, 2020, two years to the date of the latest Supreme Court ruling, I made a commitment to share your stories. It's my responsibility, not only as a media professional who's been in the business for almost 30 years, but a mental health practitioner. But occasionally, I come on here myself to connect with you on a much deeper level. And this is one of those weeks. I'm not alone though, am I? Because you're here. You heard many voices already, backed by a lot of emotions and feelings, and most certainly the one burning question is, why? So this is my opportunity to not only hold space for you, but to remind you that you too are not alone. You have more power than you think. Those voices, each a fire inside, energy, fuel, frequency, vibration, to do more, to be more, to come together for curiosity, for clarity, for connection. I opened up this podcast to you this week to amplify the message of why. And while the rocket fuel to do so stems from the Supreme Court's decision on abortion, it's not just about women's rights or reproductive rights. It's about every decision and every why that leaves you speechless and gasping for air. It's about human rights. Yes, it is complicated. What's worth fighting for usually is. And isn't June the perfect time and the perfect month to remind us of that? Many of us are spending a lot of time, including myself, talking about gun control, pride, Juneteenth, the list goes on and on. The passion and purpose to celebrate but also gravitate to a cause or awareness is stronger than ever. You and I may not have all the answers today, but one thing is clear. Every time America is pushed into a corner because of a decision that has to be made, 
a ruling that rips us to the core, we won't back down. When our freedoms are challenged or taken away, we fight harder than ever to get it back. The sleeping giant awakens in each and every one of us because we know that there is room for expansion and progress. And if you think the overturning of Roe versus Wade has nothing to do with you and you're happy with the decision, I'd like to share a few thoughts with you, not to change your mind, but rather to hold space for you to consider some possibilities. Because I know you're smart and you're compassionate and you're open-minded. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. This decision has dire consequences for the individual health and safety of each person. And it could have harsh repercussions on other landmark decisions. So while you might be able to look the other way on this issue, tomorrow's ruling might have you asking why. As a health and wellness journalist and a mental health practitioner, I have a lot of conversations about extremely personal issues on a daily basis. Traumas, upsets, questions, emotions, fears, and those don't just go away overnight. I have held space for people who have been gang raped within an inch of their lives or sexually assaulted by a family member as a child or forced into making a decision and a difficult choice that stays with them to this very day. Trauma. So if you only support abortion, if a woman has been raped or subjected to incest, you're reinforcing the idea that in order for a woman or a person who can get pregnant to have a right to their body, someone else has to violate it first. Is that really where you stand? And what about the mother to be who is excited and expecting? But then in the blink of an eye, that pregnancy takes a turn. A miscarriage. One in four pregnancies end in miscarriage. And not all of them end naturally. So imagine being confronted with a difficult decision to terminate to protect your own health and well-being. If you face this in your own life, I am holding space for you so deeply right now. If you have not... I hope you never do. Shame, guilt, loss, fear, the emotions are endless. One in four pregnancies, a miscarriage. Where does one go when 26 states, more than half of our country, the land of the free, are severely restricting access to health care or banning a possibility that could mean life or death for a mother to be? Where do these pregnant people go? Where? In what is considered the wealthiest nation in the world, not everyone has the ways and means emotionally, physically, or even financially to take a road trip that is the furthest thing from a vacation. But that one trip is almost certainly guaranteed to be riddled with emotions as they face judgment, shame, or even time behind bars for what may now be seen as a crime a crime against humanity. What's the crime? A desire to love, to be loved, to provide, to give, to feel safe, to live well? Even if you live in a state where abortion rights are upheld, access to safe medical procedures shouldn't be determined by your location, and it shouldn't be the privilege of a small few. Suddenly, a choice to protect our physical and mental health makes us criminals. Women and people who could become pregnant would be prosecuted for already dealing with the suffering of the loss and pain of parenthood, in addition to the suffering in their bodies that they're already going through. Now, their mental health is at risk. And if you think you can just get over that, move on, try again, I ask you to reconsider that thought process too. Trauma lives in the body. And while healing is possible, it takes time. Not every choice is easy. 
including the one to be a mother or not. And then there's the dad. Yeah, I'm going there. You heard some of those voices at the top of this episode. And if you really listen, trust me on this, you hear the pain in their voices too. I've heard the cries and the compassion. Are we really that disconnected that we're going to blame every man and those who identify as men and silence them for feeling pain in their own way? When I first asked for you to share your voices, your one word for the top of this show, I had some people reach out to me expressing that this isn't a man's issue. They shouldn't have a voice. I don't buy that. And I applaud all, no matter what you identify as, who have shared your voice on this podcast and in general on this particular issue. That includes the men and those who identify as such for coming forward and speaking up. Because all too often, men are looked at as the enemy when they too are confronted by their own traumas. Some have been fathers who cried with their partners when tough decisions had to be made. They grieve and shed tears. It may not be their body in this particular situation, but they feel loss and they find the strength to be a container of support when their partner needs to be held, hugged, and heard. So honor them, allow them to be part of the healing process. How in the world are we going to be a country united, a world united, if we continue to divide ourselves by state, by policy, by religion, by sexual preference, by color, by race, and now by gender. Conversations are happening, and one thing I am hearing is that men need to hear more men sharing. Women need to hear more men bring up the topic of reproductive rights, so it's not only our responsibility. As women and people who can become pregnant, we are often burdened with having to share which is why society thinks that this is a woman's problem. It's not. And when we consciously create the space for more compassion, connection, and conversations, free of judgment and shame, maybe then we can actually find a common ground. So for that reason, I am proud to stand with men who aren't afraid to let women lead, to honor her strength and stand beside her to fight for a cause, just as much as he holds her tight when she is crying tears of physical and emotional loss and pain. I love you for it. All of you who've stepped up with love and honesty and integrity and authenticity, courage, and yes, vulnerability. Don't stop. I see you and others do too. However you identify, identify as human first, and let's support each other and speak up. We are smart enough to know who the bad seeds are, just as much as we are wise enough to know an entire group of human beings isn't to blame just because they do not have a uterus. And for the leaders of the world who have an opportunity to show up for reproductive rights for their employees and not just listen, but take action. Thank you for displaying your company values. But now it's time to live up to them. Show up for your team. They will never forget it. And that goes for the lawmakers too. You have a responsibility. So own up. Each and every person is not just a vote. We are not just numbers. We're humans with homes and families and lives to live. And the leaves fall everywhere, including in your backyard. You're not above the rest. So how do you show up? How can you help? Well, the first thing you can do is consider donating to local abortion funds like 
forabortion.com. That's four with the number four, abortion.com. I'm going to share that link and many more in the podcast notes. And if you or someone you know needs help or is looking for support or possibilities, here are a few resources for you. Shout Your Abortion is a campaign to normalize abortion. Don't Ban Equality is a campaign for companies to take a stand against abortion restrictions. Abortion.cafe has information about where to find clinics. And then there's PlanCPills.org, which provides early at-home abortion pills and keep in the privacy of your own home in your medicine cabinet. Again, I'm going to share these links and these resources, as well as many more in the show notes. Of course, as a mental health practitioner who is trauma-informed, I'm here to help you too, to provide extra support if feelings associated with stress or anxiety start creeping in. If you aren't clear on how to move forward or you're lacking confidence and clarity and you find that you're doing this alone, you can connect with me. We'll find ways to heal. And if I can't help you, we'll find somebody who can. There is always help and you are never alone. Holistically speaking, I want to say thank you for taking the time to tune in, to listen with an open heart and mind. And also, I want to thank my friends at Squadcast, especially Arielle Nissenblatt, for her time and attention putting together a lengthy list that you'll find in the show notes on ways to both give and receive support on this issue. And if you're looking for a way to amplify your voice to start your own podcast, Squadcast is a wonderful remote recording platform that's constantly evolving and the one I use to make this show happen. You can give them a try for free for seven days. I'll share that link in the podcast notes as well. Of course, I also want to thank my fellow podcasters who have joined me to hold space for others to share their stories, especially the independent podcasters out there that do so much of this work on their own to hold space for this issue and many others. Having a platform like this is not something we take lightly. I hope you'll continue to support podcasts by not only tuning in and listening week after week, but subscribing, paying it forward, sharing episodes, sharing shows. It makes a difference. And finally, thank you to the man behind the music week after week, my dear friend, Lip Bone Redding. One final thought before I leave you this week, listen more. And I mean, actively listen. We owe it to each other to have conversations if it means we are going to grow and heal and create the space for change together. When no one is listening to each other and we spend more time standing on our own pedestals with a closed mind, yelling at one another about what's right or wrong, I can tell you this, no one wins and no one is heard. So speak up with compassion and kindness. And don't forget to listen to that is called balance. Holistically speaking, I love you. I believe in you. And I will most certainly see you on the flip.